What is up everyone? This is Tuzlo, aka CBS, and today I'm gonna be installing my new um ATS knock sensor um kit for the MZ series or 3S series uh Toyota engines. So if you guys are familiar with the MZ motors, they have really sensitive knock sensors. And what I mean by that is if they get hit with a knock really hard, apparently they they go bad and will trigger the knock sensor code and basically cuts down the power of your vehicle to prevent any any further pinging knocking whatever etc etc and damaging the engine so today we have the ats um gm knock sensor adapter kit this is actually from a uh, sketchy looking website i was a little eh, iffy about buying it but after i made a post about this on the mz performance page people have been saying that this is the way to go for mz series engines because i guess these gm knock sensors um, are more durable and they can handle the knocking a bit better and don't break down as easy apparently one guy had them, has them for 11 years now so 11 if, if i could get mine to last at least five years i'd be happy but 11 years shit <laughs> so i went ahead and purchased a new knock sensor wire because apparently this is very common to replace whenever you do replace knock sensors so i got this off rock auto um there's the part number ultra power um doesn't really matter if you get an oem one or not because obviously we're not even going to be running oem um knock sensors but basically what we're going to do here is we're going to cut these ends right here and we're going to splice in the new gm connection if i can get this out don't mind my bed sheets here <laughs> girlfriend wanted to give me something cute i guess because I did enjoy Charlie Brown as a kid. But here we have the connection, obviously one wire. So what we're going to do is do it for both knock sensors. We're going to cut it and we're going to solder and splice it together. Make sure you solder this guys. Do not just twist and tie. This is like really, really important stuff that you do not want to just twist and tie because one, it sits underneath the intake manifold and having to take that off every time to service this is a pain in the ass. I actually don't feel like doing this, but you know, I'm tired of getting the check engine light for the knock sensor. So ATS, thank you guys for having a solution for us Toyota guys. Even though I believe this is technically for the 3S GTE engine, that's the way they sell it. Um, the, the MZ will use the same thing, so we're not going to be using these. I hate using these, and I hate using these. So these, no. <laughs> we're going to solder this, and we're going to solder this and heat shrink it. So here's the ATS knock sensor. So basically, you can't, you can't just put in a GM knock sensor because the threads apparently don't match and aren't the same. So what they do is they make this adapter... And I believe it's already pre-torqued. They say torque it to 15, 15 pound feet. So I'm going to get a wrench and torque it right here. And double, just double check, make sure it's torqued. And then go from there. And obviously you want to torque this as well. So I feel like we still have to take this off to torque this one. So regardless, let's go ahead and start on this project. So I kind of already got a head start. Um, this is going to be completely different from like your guys' setup because you guys can either have a Camry, a V6 Swap Celica, Solara, or whatever vehicle you have with an MZ engine in it. So what I've already done is I loosened up the, on the manual tension uh, drive belt. I already loosened that up and there's videos to how to do that. Just loosen up the 12 millimeter bolt and then I took off. I just slid over my intake, took off, took off my throttle body. Really easy stuff to do for two 12 millimeter bolts and nuts. Um, intake, you just use a flathead to take it off. And then just unplug the three connectors for the EGR temp, for the throttle position sensor and the idle air control valve. Put all your stuff on the cowl. 
and went ahead and also removed the hose for the for the air assist um, injectors so with that out of the way we can most likely get ahead and move this out of the way as well we got to bring it forward but i got to take off this connector but i can't take it off unless i loosen these three seven millimeter bolts or nuts then that whole piece should slide over and i'm able to take off the supercharger and so there you have it i got it all removed you guys noticed that i didn't really do a step-by-step -step because this isn't really meant to be a step-by-step -step video this isn't a how-to this is me simply showing you guys what's out there and what can be used for our setups obviously the oem knock sensors don't do all that great of a job so um, i'm gonna go ahead and remove them but obviously guys it's really simple um once you remove the intake manifold or the supercharger you have to remove your fuel rail line move it over to the side it's held on by four 10 millimeter bolts and then it has the spacers over there you can see them right here the bolts and the spacers get those out of the way get the the air injection assist for the fuel injectors out of the way and then get your get this coolant line out of the way as well and just make sure before you lift it up 100 percent completely don't do it a lot because then you might get water going into the down the cylinder and you're going to figure out you're going to figure out a way of getting that out so make sure before you put everything back together that there's no water in there and try to cover this up but guys like i just took this off so i'm gonna go get something to cover this up so shit doesn't go down in there but um as i said this isn't a how-to video this is me simply showing you guys what's out there what can be used and how can we fix this for you guys out of california you guys are more than welcome to use the knock sensor relocation kit but at the same time you're not really monitoring the knocking of your engine block because i feel like it's not where it's supposed to be it's kind of out here so it won't read as accurate as you want it to so i'm gonna give this ats knock sensor a shot hopefully it doesn't turn on i really hope it doesn't because uh, even though this isn't hard to do it's just really annoying to get to guys like like look at this <laughs> oh my god on a 2zz it would have been so much easier to do but i don't know anyways guys let me continue on i'm gonna take a break because i'm still a little bit iffy with the covid right now so i could barely like breathe well and i'm just like kind of whiffy wheezing and whatnot so i'm gonna take a break get back to it but for now i'm gonna go swap over the harness and solder on the connections so i was originally trying to depin the old connection and see if i could put it onto the gm plug but obviously that's completely different so i had to cut the wire from the toyota knock sensor plug and i pretty much just uh, soldered it together have my flux right here and my solder so got that done use some heat shrink tubing and i'm gonna wrap the whole thing up with some tested tape just to kind of keep it more not from crunching up and cracking over time because the old harness just cracked up pretty bad just from the age but hopefully this works out and let's hope it does because this is an aftermarket harness and these are gm plugs so let's see what happens with that so i got the first part of the knock sensor installed ATS does not torque them down to the adapter, um, I guess the adapter plate or adapter socket, adapter, adapter, whatever you want to call it. Um, they don't torque down the knock sensors to those, but they do recommend that you torque it down to 15 pound feet. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Honda valve covers, you have to torque those down to 16 pound feet. And even then that's not a lot. So I don't have a socket big enough to torque those down so i'm just gonna go to my best of knowledge because i know how much 16 pound feet is so i'm just gonna torque it as best as i can uh, i don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue and same goes with the actual knock sensors themselves um i do have a fitting to go over this but it just won't clear the area that i'm working in so i'm just gonna go by the best of my knowledge as to what is 15 pound feet or yeah that's what they asked for so let's go ahead and install those so there you have it got those installed 
and I'm gonna make sure to wire them up before I put this coolant line back in so doesn't seem like they went far in that much but I did um, torque those down myself torque to see bass spec 15 inch pound or 15 pound feet so let's go ahead and install our harness where did I leave that at oh here it is so there's our harness that's how I went ahead and modified it so let's go ahead and install it so there you have it it's installed made sure these are properly tight can't really do much here but the clearance is really really tight i did kind of see right here and it does clear the knock sensor does clear this hose so even if there's vibration it's not going to rub up against it so i got like about a finger length underneath the hose and the sensor itself so that's good got the wire routed hooked up right here use this clip again so now we're just going to put the plenum back on so once we got our intake plenum installed or intake assembly installed we went ahead and connected our fuel rails and our fuel injectors make sure you connect those because these aren't easy to get to when the supercharger slash intake manifold is installed so torqued all those down to 11 as well and gonna connect our knock sensor wire and our keyer core line went ahead and installed our intake manifold gasket went ahead and also installed the supercharger easiest way to install the supercharger is you need to take off the stud that's right here and replace it with a bolt so that you can have this nut attached and you're able to rock the supercharger forward and back a little bit so when you rock it forward you can slip the belt on easily and so once you get it back onto place you can see it has a little bit of tension and that way we could just come over here and tighten it up but that's an easy way to get the supercharger belt back on to the mz series so let's go ahead and tighten these up and just put it connect our sensors right here back on gonna plug back in some of the things that we removed like the egr plug right here we have back these out a little bit and then we're able to plug that in so then we're gonna tighten these back down let's plug this one back in i'll do that one off camera we're gonna plug this one in plug this one in let's send it underneath Got that on tight. These don't need to be super tight. Got that one installed. That one installed. That one installed. Now let's put on our throttle body back on. All right, everything's back installed. Kind of a little hard. Um, I did have a problem with the connector. It seems to hold, but if I pull on it, the clip doesn't do its job. When I put the OEM connector of this one back on, it holds perfectly fine i don't know why this aftermarket one is not clipping on but if it does come out while i'm driving it i did hold on to the oem one so i'm just going to take off the the wires from this plug and swap them over to the oem one the plug that works and just go from there because i don't know i guess i could zip tie it as well to kind of hold it in place and see how that goes but i don't know um i don't like that that wasn't working properly but i guess it's trial and error let's see what happens if it stays cool if it doesn't then we gotta go back to the drawing board but for now it's holding i'm gonna leave it alone hopefully the vibration doesn't knock it off but we do have everything installed we reinstalled the intake got the one hose right here and then got the one from the air box vacuum chamber whatever you want to call it back installed all this is for california purposes bs so you probably don't have this if you don't live in if you don't live in california but anyways gonna go ahead and pour some distilled water freaking landmine right here in my backyard but let's go ahead and pour some distilled water and start the engine up all right let's hope we're no check engine light Oh, let me get in here. All right, hopefully I install everything correctly. So 
sounds like I did. I feel like if the ECU, I feel like if the ECU wouldn't have liked those GM knock sensors, it would have triggered the code already. Because on the on the OEM Toyota ones, it would trigger them immediately. Wouldn't even drive it that much, and boom, check engine light would pop up. But I really hope this solves the issue with Toyota knock sensors because this is great for the 3S engine, the MZ platform and whatever uh, single wire knock sensors are used for Toyota engines. So I'm gonna, let it, um, I'm gonna let it warm up for a bit and go from there. But probably not this video. I'll probably upload one later down the road, maybe like a year update as to if the knock sensor code ever came back on and inform of you guys because I'm, I don't feel like I'm gonna wait a whole year just to upload this video. I don't wanna hold on to the the, the files for a whole year i'll just go ahead and upload it and i'll upload another video but if you guys are interested just stick around and we'll go from there um again thank you guys for watching um please make sure to like subscribe comment more mz content on the way guys um as i said i've been feeling kind of shitty um if you guys don't know what's going on with me right now check out my building a 2004 celica gts video towards the end i kind of explain a little bit as to what's going on in my life but I might do a live stream sometime soon and inform of you guys when I can start talking a little bit better because right now, I kid you not, like every five minutes I start coughing because yeah, COVID hit me, it sucks. I am feeling a lot better now guys, um, just coughing here and there, but my sore throat and my ability to breathe easier from my nose is coming back. So I should be going back to work on the, I don't know, sometime on Monday or 29th. I'm not sure yet, but for right now, I can't be near people. Right now, I'm in my backyard. There's no one out here, so. But still feel like shit, but let's hope, up, let's hope that I feel a lot better. But anyways, guys, see you guys on the next one. It's all warmed up now. Give it a little bit of a whine. Woo! That never gets old, guys. That never gets old.